As I told Kyle on Saturday, I am sorry for what he has been through and thought he has been courageous, especially this past week. We discussed the path forward with him involved in efforts to confront abuse. We also offered to him and his family our resources for counseling. We could not be more sorry for the trauma that Kyle has had to endure. Until last Monday, we had not seen the report in any form. Other than the allegations in the lawsuit, we had no other knowledge and we were awaiting the findings of the Jenner and Block investigation. We were insistent on an independent investigation and we made clear from the outset that we could override or pursue any other course of action if we were dissatisfied on how the investigation was conducted or had reason to question its findings. The only updates that we received were on timing and process. Jenner and Block did a very thorough and professional job interviewing 139 witnesses some multiple times in the course of their investigation. My first task in reviewing the report late Monday and into Tuesday was to deal with the Chicago Blackhawks. Whatever you concluded from what the witnesses said, it is clear that what happened was inappropriate, it was wrong on every level, and it was not handled correctly by the Blackhawks organization. The fact that ownership was found to be unaware did not change my view that the club bore responsibility in this regard, and the club was fined as a result. People can and have debated the amount of the fine, but it was substantial by any measure and acknowledges that the organization failed to act appropriately. Also, the fine sends, as intended, a message to all clubs as to how I view their organizational responsibilities. I then turned to dealing with Joel Quenville and Kevin Sheveldayoff. The, the report laid out what witnesses said, some consistent, some inconsistent on various points, but it did not draw conclusions as to credibility. Therefore, as a matter of due process, I needed to meet in person with both Quenville and Sheveldayoff so that I could best and most fairly decide what was appropriate in terms of a league response. I met with Joel Quenville on Thursday afternoon to discuss his view of the events of 11 years ago and wanted to make sure he felt he had a fair opportunity to tell me his account of what had happened. Ultimately, he decided it was best to resign, which as you know from my statement on Thursday evening, is a decision with which I agreed. Should he have coached on Wednesday night? I suppose people can differ on that point, and I understand that, but he had already coached 867 games since 2010, and I wanted to make sure that no one, including Coach Quenville, could say that I had prejudged him. Again, people can disagree on this, but I was focused on the long term not that one game. As it relates to Kevin Sheveldayoff, I made clear on Friday that I do not believe he bore any responsibility for the club's failure to act appropriately. There seems to be some confusion, and if I was not previously clear on that, I apologize, but there seems to be some confusion on the point of whether, despite his lack of power, position, or seniority, he should have felt free to speak up. But because of his limited authority and circumstance, he left the meeting believing that this matter was going to be investigated by his bosses. And when Aldridge parted ways with the team, he thought that was what had happened. Kevin was not in a position either to be made aware of or to access additional information about what was going on after the May 23rd meeting and he did not have such information. 
You talked about the timing of learning of these specific allegations, but I'm curious, um, you know, Brad Aldrich was investigated and arrested in October of 2013, and he was convicted for criminal sexual conduct in February of 2014. When were you made aware uh, of those, you know, actions? And when you were made aware, uh, did you make any inquiries with the Blackhawks about the nature of his departure from the team? So no, we, we wouldn't have known that or it wouldn't, wouldn't have hit our radar screen until after the civil litigation was filed in May. 